Your next news at 9. Chicago's Morning Answer continues next on AM560, The Answer. Now, from the Signature Bank Studios. Only the biggest stories, only the biggest guests, and only the biggest opinions. This is AM560, The Answer. Top of the morning, Dan and Amy. Remember that uh, Turkish immigrant that uh, Fox caught up with at the border a couple weeks back? Who uh, I'll never forget him, ever. Yeah, I mean, it was uh, was a a rare moment of uh, clarity. Uh, Very concerned about uh, illegal immigrants coming into this country. You know, illegal immigrants like him, but not him. Did you have to pay a cartel? Yes. How much? Around 10,000. 10,000? Yes. In fact, the American people is right, completely true. Who come into this country, they don't know. Well, okay, I'm good, but uh, how if they're not good? How they're killer, psychopath, else? Mm-hmm. Uh, no guarantee of that. Why, like, like no, no, security, no security check, no background check. No security check, no background check. You're worrying about who's crossing the border? Yes, yes, yes. They are, of course, me, because I'm like, people are not look normal. Yeah. Um, he, he raises a, a salient point. In point of fact, um, there was a migrant who got carjacked by a migrant in Chicago the other day. Yeah, migrant on migrant crime. Yeah. CBS reporting eight guys from Trajakistan were busted over fears they were uh, planning a terrorist attack. And DHS is flagging 500 illegals who were brought here by a smuggling group linked to ISIS. And uh, this, What could go wrong, Dan? This just came uh, over the transom. Mm-hmm. An illegal immigrant has been arrested for raping a 15-year-old girl in upstate New York. He uh, forced the girl into his vehicle in Albany after threatening her with a metal pole. This is an illegal immigrant from Turkey. He then took the clothes off and raped her. According to the charges, he was nabbed last week and charged with first degree rape. Thank God he didn't kill her, but he shouldn't be here. That's another preventable crime. And Mallorca keeps saying, you know, yesterday that the vetting process is working. We have a secure and safe border. But if this is what security looks like, I want a do-over. Well, I assume there's going to be a lot of storytelling along these lines by President Trump tonight. Uh, for more color on tonight's debate, please be joined by Michael Goodwin, New York Post columnist and Fox News contributor. Michael, thanks for joining us again. Appreciate it. Oh, it's a pleasure, guys. Thank you. Uh, so you know uh, President Trump pretty well. You've uh, done interviews with him before. You get a feel for him. What, uh, what's your feeling about uh, the approach that he will take tonight? Well, look, I, I think you uh, to answer that, you have to see the, the whole campaign in perspective. And I think he's fairly confident the way things are going um, and so does not need to knock it out of the park tonight. He just needs not to lose. And that, I think, would, would be the best thing going forward. And so if, if I were sort of inside his head, what I would say is, Think of the people who are not yet supporting you and use tonight to talk to them about what you plan to do as president, what you did as president, what you plan to do as president, and where Joe Biden has failed. And I think if he can sort of stick to a a plan like that, uh, well, of course, uh, he's got to talk to the people who already support him. But I, I, I do think this is a moment where he needs to expand the tent. Uh, and, the, and if he were to lose his temper or, you know, interrupt as he did, uh, which he can't really do tonight because of the, the, the microphone control uh, that the lords of CNN have commandeered. Lawrence, um, yes. Yeah. Um, but, but I think if he, can, if he can reach those new voters, those persuadable, undecided voters, I mean, there aren't many according to the polls, but because everybody is leaning one way or another, I think he needs to secure those leaners. And I think that if he can do that, then it's very hard to see what Joe Biden can do to disrupt that. Well, you know, uh, as the old saying goes, styles make fights. And I just think, you know, the whole um, Trump's sitting on a lead, playing rope-a-dope, that's just not, that's just not who he is, though. I think that's going to be, I think it's going to be <laughs> yeah, difficult for him to buy into that, especially when uh, he's pilloried with, uh, you know, insurrectionist and convicted felon for 90 minutes. 
Um, I completely agree. Uh, it will be a challenge for him, a big challenge. But I do think we are seeing some signs of a different Donald Trump already. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you two examples. First is the uh, the McCormick, the, pre, the uh, candidate in Pennsylvania for the Senate. Mm -hmm. uh, Trump rejected him uh, the last time and endorsed Mehmet Oz. Uh, he, he did not see McCormick as a as a member of the MAGA uh, nation, and he lost. Uh, Oz lost, and <clears throat> that was a winnable seat for Republicans. This time, he is endorsing McCormick. McCormick came to his rally uh, in uh, in Pennsylvania and spoke. Uh, so that's one. Larry Hogan is another, the candidate in for the Senate in Maryland, deep blue Maryland. And Hogan is, does not like Trump. Uh, Lara, Lara Trump, the, head of, the deputy head of the RNC, went after Hogan. But Donald Trump did not. He endorsed him. He said he would love to have see him in the Senate. Now, those are, those are examples of what I see as a practical Donald Trump. Yeah. And you know, it reminds me of Ed, Ed Koch, the, the late mayor of New York, once said that if you agree with me on nine out of twelve issues, you should vote for me. If you agree with me on twelve out of twelve issues, you should see a psychiatrist. <laughs> uh, and, and I think that's sort of the stage where Trump is. He he is learning, I believe, to be satisfied with somebody who will vote for him, vote for his policies. 80% of the time instead of just 100% of the time. That is that is progress for Donald Trump. Well, and he right. won't have he, the closing remarks. I mean, he's going to get the last word in. Yes. Yes. Uh, I, look, I, I think this is – the wild card, of course, there are several. One is Joe Biden's frame of mind, his condition, his – you know, the, the, whatever cocktail he's on. The second, of course, is uh, the CNN moderators who uh, clearly hate Trump. I mean, both of them, they yeah. have a record that is extraordinary. When you think about it, that this is, this is the new journalism, right? Hate Donald Trump, be so aligned with one party. Uh, and so those are wild cards that he can't really control, but he has to deal with. Well, you, you think that uh, comparing Trump to Hitler suggests that they don't like him? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, that's, when, you, when you're gone that far, there's no coming back. No, there isn't. Um, what, do, what do you think Trump will do vis-a-vis -vis Hunter Biden? Will he, oh, yeah. will he get, uh, treat uh, that situation with kid gloves? Will he largely ignore it? Will he do something I sort of suggested? He can announce he's going to pardon him because this isn't about Hunter. This is about the, the big guy. Um, you know, uh, it, what, what, how should, how do you think he will handle that? I, I think it will be, uh, one of two ways, uh, two, two possibilities. One, one is he will throw it in, I think, as a, as a sidelight, you know, when, when Joe Biden calls Trump a convicted felon, he may say, well, so is your son. Um, the other is what will what will the moderators do with it? Will they bring it up? Will the moderators bring up the 2020 debate uh, where Joe Biden lied about his son, where he lied about the laptop, where he lied about uh, making money from China and all of that? Now, Jake Tapper has mentioned this on CNN recently that Biden lied at that debate over those issues. So will Tapper bring it up? I think that's, to me, the, the real question here. Will he put Joe Biden on the spot about his son? Right. And, and you know, and, and part of it, it seems to me, this is where Trump has to exercise that restraint that you're talking about, where, you know, they may ra raise the issue of Hunter Biden, for example, because they want Trump to say something intemperate. They want him to go after, you know, a Joe, Joe's son, and then Joe can do the, I just love my son, and he's, good, you know, it's terrible what happened to him, and he's paying the consequences, but it's a testament to our justice system, and at least he accepts the consequences, although he is trying to get a new trial. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, that, that, you know, you know he, he, Trump can overplay that rather than, and, and, and sort of do tit for tat in a way that comes across as a bit uh, coarse. I agree, and, and that would be a sympathy vote for Joe Biden. 
Um, and so I, I do think there's danger there. Look, there's danger everywhere. Yeah. Um, you, you know, you, 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 you have a lead, but it's not a big lead. It, it's not soft. It's not secure. And so you, you have to be careful here. There are a lot of landmines, and that, that's why we're all going to watch. So if Biden stumbles, stares off into space, has a senior moment, how should Trump handle that? Say nothing. I mean, I think let him go, let him ramble, let him, you know, and then maybe at the end when it's your turn, say, Are you okay? folks, we, we just saw why he's not fit to be president. Um, and, and I do think there, that that's a line that has to be said at some point. I don't think, I don't think Trump can ignore uh, the elephant in the room, which is Biden's age and his mental decline. Uh, I mean, isn't that why this why Biden wanted the debate in the first place? Because that argument has become so strong and so loud, even among Democrats. I mean, I, I, these these poll numbers are amazing. There was one the New York Times had one. It was either 81 percent or 86 percent of all respondents thought he was too old for a second term. Eighty right. in the 80s. Right. Um, so uh, that that's a door that that Trump doesn't have to break down. He merely has to, I think, push on it. And at some point, uh, I believe that will become a relevant part. Uh, look, it, it, it's possible Biden will be so juiced up that he'll make it through an hour and a half of of you know without a visible decline. In which part that's a that's an issue that Trump will have to raise himself, I think, and and do so in a, in a way that is just sort of cut and dry. The, the public sees this. I don't think he needs to uh, persuade people. I think he simply needs to remind them. Right. Biden, and the, and the, been... Well, and the flip side is, so what but Biden's charged, but, you know, that, that, that should be top of mind in Trump's mind, that 81 percent think he's too old to, to have a second term because— that necessarily means Biden's only path to a second term is to make people hate Trump enough to overcome uh, their good judgment. And, and so don't fall into that trap of doing things that, you know, inspire recoil. Yes. Look, I, 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 again, that is why Biden wanted this debate in June. Uh, th- there is this possibility that by the time the, the convention gets to your neighborhood, um, Joe Biden will not be the nominee. I mean, I, and that's a reality. I don't know how that would happen, but I, I think he would have to agree to it. Right. I don't think there's any way to go around him. But if he becomes persuaded that he cannot win the election, that he will destroy the party, they'll lose both houses then he would have to voluntarily step aside. And he, he is, he's having this debate. He's, they're pouring, it's fascinating, you know, the, the, they're pouring $50 million into ads in the battleground states in June, mm-hmm. in June. Uh, that's unheard of. I mean, that is, that is a campaign that feels the heat and feels like it's on a short leash. And so that's that's why this debate is so important uh, for them. It's that's why I say it's more important for Biden than it is Trump. Uh, Trump has to prove has some things to prove, but Biden has to prove he's viable. Michael Goodwin, New York Post columnist, Fox News contributor. Michael, thanks as always. My pleasure. Thank you, guys. And he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. It's news, opinion, insight. This is Chicago's Morning Answer on AM560. The answer. Protecting and growing your retirement assets can be complicated. From asset and legacy protection to retirement income and extended care, you need a plan.